Yeah, it's okay. Everybody pronounces it incorrectly, unless you're Serbian or you know me well. Um, okay, well, thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, I'm really pumped to be here. Uh, Dora Hacks is a great partner of Nobles. Uh, you guys are a validator and just one of the early kind of community builders in the developer space. So it's quite the honor. Um, okay, so I'm Yelena. I am the co-founder and CEO of Noble. Um, Noble actually started out as a project about two years ago after a couple things happened. One, uh, we had the fallout of Terra, which was a big blow to the crypto ecosystem, but specifically Cosmos, where UST was the native stablecoin that was used as a dominant pair in many trading pools on many DEXs. And then another amazing thing actually happened, uh, well, something positively happened around the same time, which was uh, DYDX uh, signaled their intent to launch as an app chain, uh, as V4. And so Paul, obviously, before, uh, before myself, talked a little bit about that story. So Noble really kind of came about out of a confluence of these very organic events. And I'll talk a little bit about what Noble is. Uh, I know some of us know us here, but uh, others don't. So it's good to do a little bit of a background. Uh, and then more specifically, uh, towards the latter uh, end of my talk, I'll talk about Project Halo. Uh, Project Halo is actually the first time Noble will be bringing RWAs on chain uh, into the Cosmos ecosystem. So this is a new initiative. Uh, we're kind of learning as we go, but there's already quite a lot that we've uh, kind of discovered. And even before we launch um, USYC, uh, there's kind of a lot that we can sort of share with the ecosystem. So uh, let's get started. So Noble, uh, as a background, serves a very specific purpose. Uh, so within the app chain kind of context, you know, we talk a lot about uh, application-specific blockchains. I would argue Noble is the most application-specific specific blockchain that exists in the sense that we're not trying to you know, reinvent the wheel on things like DeFi, things like you know, NFTs, trading, et cetera. We're really coming in at a very specific angle, which is how do we do at native asset issuance in a highly modular, highly interoperable, sovereign ecosystem of chains such as in the Cosmos ecosystem. So a lot of chains, uh, you know, when they launch, they have a native token. Typically, that native token it has a high you know, inflationary rate to get people to use that token, to bond that token, to stake that token. You know, you'll, you'll often see 300% APR, 200% APR, things like this. Noble didn't actually start off like that. We started off as a proof of authority chain, uh, which would eventually have USDC as the gas token. And so we really kind of re-examined re re uh, and rethought the playbook for how to launch an app chain. So serving one purpose only, again, Noble is made for a digital asset issuance. About four months ago, we brought native USDC to Cosmos. So uh, in four months, we've done $140 million uh, of total assets issued. We actually have more than 33 IBC connections, about 36. Uh, and we actually have three issuers that we work with, Circle, Hashnote, and a team out of Japan called Toki Finance. So if you look at kind of the overall landscape, uh, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I love to tweet these statistics because it's quite gratifying. But you see, you know, the total market cap, Noble is uh, obviously at 140 million, but what you don't know, we're actually the second fastest growing USDC issuance uh, kind of partner to Circle in uh, all of crypto. So that really shows you that actually Cosmos and app chains and IBC, these things are taking off. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited for Cosmos season. Yeah, I think we all deserve a round of applause. Um, so what, what is Noble? I told you a little bit of the background, uh, a little bit of our philosophy, our kind of approach. Uh, so Noble fundamentally is UX, right? The fact that we had obviously native UCC to begin with was great, but how we uh, decided to unlock those UX capabilities and efficiencies was actually something we had to figure out from scratch. So, um, you know, effectively, we bring liquidity and efficient interchain routing to app chains, issuers, and end users. And our kind of optimizations around UX has actually made USDC the dominant stable in Cosmos. And, you know, obviously, stable. USDC is used in like many, many different protocols, but um, Tether's actually bigger, right? Like as market cap. However, even though Tether is more adopted, we've done uh, about $130 million of native USDC on other Cosmos chains, so DYDX, Osmosis, et cetera. And the other stable coin, which is Tether, has only done 10 million. So if you think about it proportionally to the IBC out, which is what we track for, we want to see that IBC out ratio be super, super high. Uh, we're 12x the ecosystem penetration of, of Tether. And I, and I think, again, I just want to highlight 
what we're trying to achieve is this explosion of liquidity, you know, efficient routing, where we can facilitate all of those transactions in a very seamless way, where the user uh, has just an incredibly delightful experience. So in the last 30 days, uh, we've done about $400 million in USDC transactions. Um, so I know a lot of you here are, you know, Cosmos experts, you know IBC, but just a quick snapshot uh, of kind of the volume of our connections to the rest of the ecosystem uh, is here. So I talked a lot about Noble UX, or I talked a little bit about Noble UX, um, but one thing I want to actually introduce for the first time is a, a, a module that we're building called Automated Interchain Accounts. Uh, this is something we've been sharing kind of one-on-one -on -one with various chain partners, um, and uh, for the first time, I want to share it kind of more publicly. It isn't yet live, but it kind of gives you uh, an appreciation for the types of UX kind of efficiencies that Noble can unlock because we have this uh, kind of app chain dedicated to this one uh, very specific use case. So um, this story uh, actually goes back uh, a few months. Um, so there was a team that came to us uh, called Crafton. Um, and Crafton is a gaming development company. They're the uh, builders of PUBG, which if you're a gamer, is one of the most widely played games in uh, the world. And they're building a chain called Subtilis. And so they actually want to build a blockchain, an app chain on Cosmos to uh, do creator payouts in stable coins. And so, you know, they have this high vision for their chain, for their gamers, for their ecosystem, and they need efficient rails and onboarding of their users, of their gamers, their creators to uh, settle us and obviously to get paid out uh, you know, in a proper way. So uh, the objective was very simple, simple but actually not so simple, which is have users register an account uh, on Noble to automatically forward assets to destination chains such as Settleus in one click. So it sounds pretty simple, you know, a lot of us that use Kepler or IPC to token transfers, you know, it seems straightforward. It's actually not. Um, very straightforward at all when you kind of look at the real world integrations you have to take care of. In the Crafton case, it's a Stripe, so they're integrated with the Stripe API, and also just generally have a lot of compliance things that they have to take care of. So uh, we kind of sat down, whiteboarded it, and what we came to was automated interchain accounts. So for automated ICAs to work, uh, the prerequisite is you need a new packet type on a transfer channel. So right now, obviously, the main transfer channel is ICS20 for uh, fungible token transfers. Um, you're going to need a new packet type on that transfer channel, and you will need a transfer channel between a registering chain such as Subtilis or, or DYDX or Osmosis or whoever else, and Noble. Um, so very simply, uh, how this would work, uh, leveraging the capabilities of something like ICAs, is you'd receive a register packet over a transfer channel, which creates this automated ICA. So the user opt, opts in to see their tr uh, transaction forwarded. Um, that address is a unique hash of the block hash, transfer channel ID, registrant address, et cetera. Uh, we would have a new module leveraging, obviously, the capabilities of the Cosmos SDK, so an X, uh, a forwarding module. And if you're an SDK developer, that X standard is very familiar to you. Uh, it would check the anti-handlers to see if the recipient account has a forwarding count, and then it would simply um, find that transaction that has been uh, sort of automatically initiated, and those funds would be forwarded. So, you know, again, a very straightforward workflow, leveraging something like ICAs and interchain standards and IBC to really help those new kind of entities, you know, like Crafton, kind of come to Cosmos and have a delightful experience similar to the experience, obviously, uh, with the DYDX folks on V4. OK, so I talked a lot about USDC, but I think it was a really important overview just to kind of understand the noble vision and the noble approach. Uh, and next, I'll talk about uh, Project Halo. So this is a new initiative. We're super excited to be working with Hashnote. Uh, so Hashnote is a uh, issuer. They are the team behind something called USYC. Uh, this will be issued natively in Cosmos via Noble, and USYC is really cool. We have ROWAs uh, in Cosmos already, actually, uh, like regen uh, kind of carbon credits and things like this, but we don't actually have T-bills in Cosmos yet. Uh, and so we're working with 
hash note um, to, to do that. Um, and also, you know, looking forward to working with many other issuers as well. So USYC is actually the first ever vehicle for short duration US T-bills in Cosmos. So what that means, these you know, T-bills are yielding something like you know, five point whatever percent. So this is actually a, a, a way for users to natively also get exposure uh, to yield bearing stable coins in Cosmos, which is, has a many, many implications that you know, I won't necessarily get into. Hashnode super cool. They uh, actually uh, ensure T plus one and often T plus zero settlement time, which you know, if you know how settlement works in TradFi, that in of itself is really awesome. Fully composable with DeFi apps, or will be fully composable with DeFi apps in Cosmos, and of course there is a regulated component. So. Something like T-Bill in an RWA is very, very different than a stable coin. Stable coins, you know, I think Paul called them like cold hard cash. That's what they are. If they work well, they're cold hard cash that can be used super easily as you would with cold hard cash, right? But on chain. Uh, RWAs are very different. Um, RWAs are actually, uh, or specifically T-bills, are technically a security. So how you sort of bring that on chain is a very, you know, complicated process and especially complicated if you're thinking about this like highly modular, highly sovereign, you know, ecosystem of app chains that we all live and breathe. Uh, very quick snapshot of where uh, Hashnote fits into the kind of general tokenized treasuries landscape. Um, you know, this is a uh, kind of, this is a, a one way you can think about kind of the uh, you know tokenized T bills in general, unregulated, regulated, passively managed, actively managed. You can see obviously in the bottom right square you have um, hash note, um, just a little kind of uh, inform information graphic. So what it, what does it mean for for Noble to work with asset issuers? Um, Pretty straightforward. Uh, build custom logic for the token throughout the cosmos and enable a whole bunch of things. Obviously, in blo within blockchain kind of infrastructure environments, there are uh, you know different ways to deploy this kind of custom logic. We know the way to do it on Ethereum, on monolithic chains. Uh, you know that's straightforward. In Cosmos, it's a lot more complicated uh, because of the sovereign nature of each chain. There is no base layer that sort of binds them all together, where you can simply deploy a smart contract and you know have that liquidity be instantaneously available for every application building on that chain. That simply does not exist in Cosmos. So we enable, as I mentioned, better UX for Cosmos users. I talked about automated interchain accounts as an example. More efficient liquidity on ramps. So uh, CCTP is something I didn't uh, talk too much in detail about, but CCTP is the most capital efficient way, for example, to do uh, bridging of native USCC across uh, protocols. So right now we're actually connected to Ethereum, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Optimism, Base, and soon Solana. So you can literally do a bridged uh, transaction of USCC without having to ever, ever touch an AMM pool, which is like kind of amazing. <laughs> That's like, um, what, it's, it's mind blowing. The fact that we now have that, it's still like taking off, but it's quite mind blowing. Um, for those that have experienced uh, slippage and all that fun stuff. Um, and then lastly, supporting an app developer ecosystem that leverages these assets. Um, the applications we love to work with, I mean, obviously all the app chains that you know, we're interoperable with, but also things like payments apps, right? Cypher Wallet, for example, integrates with Noble. You can actually spend uh, USDC from Noble in stores uh, as, as payments, which is absolutely incredible. So. Um, last, uh, last but not least, uh, just very basic, you know, we have a USYC contract. Uh, we ultimately translate the contract from EVM to the Cosmos SDK. We still have a long way to go as, as kind of builders of these, of these mechanisms to educate um, a lot of these issuers on things like the Cosmos SDK. So we're doing a lot of in, uh, you know, uh, education on, the, on that. But it's really possible as soon as you have that standardized contract to do things like you know, native bridging, something like CCTP, you know, seamless integrations, you know, obviously hooking into APIs, KYC, all that fun stuff, and really just replicating one-to-one -one that functionality that you would see in a uh, smart contract on ETH in the Cosmos uh, landscape. So in conclusion, we're bringing assets to Cosmos. There is no monolithic architecture in Cosmos. We need stability, reliability, and some sense of neutrality. We're translating specifications into Cosmos standards. We are infrastructure integrators. Uh, we think about compliance and interoperability very deeply. And Noble is UX. So thank you.